Holy crap, I completely forgot about V2 Assault Buster. I was going on and on about V2 Buster and V2 Assault, which... Um, well, V2 Buster, I like it so much I got it to EX. It's very unusual paper, but, uh, you know, I still like it. Um, it's got Domfire, which, you know, I'm not a fan of, but they reload so quickly and they do so much damage, I gave it a pass. They also travel really quickly, you know, so I'm not worried about that. Beam Spray Cannon, don't treat it like a standard beam rifle. Just, just, just don't, okay? That's not how beam spray cannons. That's not how uh, scattering beam guns work. Okay, just, just don't. It's it's a waste of ammo, and it doesn't do in much damage anyway, so get as close as you possibly can and just spam it, right? Mega beam cannon, again, fast reload, long range penetrates, knock down, blah, blah, blah. So, yes, it, it, it's an unusual weapons layout, but surprisingly effective. The closer they get to you, the more they hurt. If you accidentally hit transform and accidentally purge, you've got a long range beam cannon sitting right there, you've got a nice dash attack sitting right there, and you've got a fairly decent melee right there. So uh, you got reload up, and you've got um, movement, dash, agility, attack, defense, and search distance. Basically everything goes up on it. Your, 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 your hex grid just goes poof. V2 Assault... Uh, the one thing they th that I didn't like about it, they fixed. So now it's good. Um, this is very much a shooting rock. It only has one melee weapon on it, with the exception of the spec. Um, you've got a long-range knockdown, penetrates, blah, 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 blah. You've got a beam machine gun that's great. By the way, both of those encapsulated in a... Well, not encapsulated. Both of those that sit behind a beam shield, a permanent beam shield, by the way, doesn't break, which is amazing, by the way. Stand up to the victory is a mega beam shield thing. It's it's one of the stranger weapons. It's a grenade, but it looks like a giant flying V. You know, stand up to the victory, blah blah blah, stuff like that. Uh, v Gundam and, and whatever. Um, and then you've got a long range beam cannon right here, which which actually behaves very similar to it is on, to to how it is on the V2 Buster. Um, the big problem I had with the V2 Assault, which which is no longer an issue, of course, is that the beam cannon and the grenade were both stationary to fire in the melee mode, which is death, which is death for you, because the very last thing you want to do when you're in a melee fight is stand still, and these two weapons basically forced you to stand still. Uh, they patched, what, a half year ago or something like that, and it finally took care of that. Both these weapons, you, you can move and shoot at the same time, so that basically fixes this thing. This is now one of, uh, one of the really high-level uh, S-rank rocks I've got. It's a shooty rock, which I love. It has a longer boost duration, and it's got lots of... This, you know, the thing that kind of pisses me off is it's got more long range than most papers do. That's kind of the sad thing about it. It's got faster reloads than most papers have. Uh, th this reload, not so much. This reload is, man, whatever. But yeah, this mode has amazing reloads, and... Doggone it. Doggone it. Now, there is a standard uh, S-rank V2 Gundam which is, I don't know when that's going to be coming out, but that is, um, it's okay, melee, machine gun, Vulcan gun, whatever it is, melee, and then you transform and it's got some beam rifle stuff that happens on it, whatever. Or maybe it's, I, I don't know what it is, I'd, I'd have to look, I'm, I'm, I'm still interested in to see what that does. But um, oddly, it was the most recent, the, the V2 Gundam is actually the most recent S rank from, from Victory Gundam to come out. It was, like the V2 Buster was the first one, V2 Assault came out shortly thereafter, and then the one that I'm going to be reviewing, the V2 Assault Buster, came out next, and then finally the base mobile suit, the V2 Gundam by itself, came out. So it's really strange how that was arranged. Like, you would think that the, the V2 Gundam would have been the first one that they would have made. For, for whatever reason, it was the, the last of the four. It was the fourth one that they made. So, it's it's weird. So, we get to the V2 Assault Buster Gundam, which has all the weapons uh, that the, the, the V2 Assault and the V2 Buster have. So, the question is, does it pan out? Let's find out. So, starting off, Weapon 1, Melee. Keep in mind this is a scissors with pretty doggone good melee. That's four hits to knock down. That's that's really good. Even some some S rank rocks can't do that. Double Riser, for example, can't do that. No, I'm kidding. Might not be able to do that to another S rank, but Double Riser definitely can do that. But 
keep in mind this is this is all, V2 Assault Buster is also V2AB is also an SS rank. You know, <clears throat> this is exactly the same potential of power that the uh, Double O Riser has. Next weapon up, scanning beam gun. Pew. Okay, whatever. Again, the secret is the closer you get, the more damage you do. Two, three, four, five. And it has the exact same spread of, of beams on it that the uh, uh, the V2 Buster has. It's the exact same kind. It's really, really wide, so you're never really going to get all those beams on there. You can see right there, I'm just spamming. I'm getting maybe seven out of the nine beams. And again, you know, the more, more distance you have, you don't want to use it like a regular beam rifle, because, I mean, look how little damage I did right there. Moving on, dumb fire. Destroy it. I think it's stationary to fire, I can't remember, because I, I was intentionally standing still just then, but let's find out. Oh, no, it's stationary to fire. Okay, so that is also... Is that right? I think that's also the same as the... Uh, the V2 uh, Buster Gundam, because it was stationary to fire. That's a very melee heavy spec, despite the fact that it's got only one melee weapon on it. Oh well. Of course, it wouldn't be an SS rank unless it could transform, so here we have the transformation. The beam shield is permanently up, by the way. And yes, they will know which weapon you're going to be using. Unless, unless they're not paying attention with weapons 2 and 3. Or is that right? Yeah, something like that. Okay, so weapon 1. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Three shots. With kind of an awkward reload. Now this is just a beam rifle. It's it's long range penetrates, but it doesn't knock down. It's just I don't think it's even a stun. Yeah, it's not a stun. So you know what you see is what you get. This is the same weapon, by the way, that's on the the V2 uh, assault Gundam. Or, I'm sorry, yeah, it's the same weapon that's on the V2 Assault Gundam. You know, you can move and shoot long range penetrates. It's also exactly the same weapon, because it's that, it's that giant beam cannon there on the, on the right arm, on the right forearm. It's exactly the same weapon on the V2 Buster when you purge. The problem is, for whatever reason, the reload rate on it is really slow, and you're stationary to fire, which doesn't make a whole ton of sense. Now, obviously, the VSBR, you're going to stand still. Boom. You know, whatever. Actually, for whatever reason, I didn't right there. That's weird. But yes, weapon three is the knockdown weapon. Look how long the reload is on there. That's kind of the odd part about it. On the V2 Assault and the V2 Buster, both SS or both S ranks, by the way, that reload is not an issue. It's actually a normal reload. But for whatever reason, on this one, the reload rate is really long. It's almost the same. Let's see if I can time it out here. You see, it's a different weapon, and it's almost exactly the same reload rate. That's that's weird. And it behaves completely differently from how it does in the other ones. So, yeah. And that's an average. Kill this guy before I die, got it. I was hoping to get this one at full HP, but oh well. And lots of tissue shooting. Keep in mind this is a scissors, and lo and behold, it actually has a boost ratio of an S rank rock. Or maybe a C rank rock, depending on how you look at it.
Restoration comes up a little bit shorter in the non-melee mode, which, you know, that's all well and good. The melee mode should have a longer boost duration on it, so long as the other mode has something well, of an appropriate duration. So, yeah. Yeah. And this should come up even shorter. So, like, ugh, a hair shorter. Um, what I like about V2AB is it takes the best attributes of the other two and just piles them on. I really like that. I do. Uh, scattering Beam Gun, unusual to have it in the melee mode, but on the other hand, if you're really close to a target, you know, you need to be able to do that thing. So it makes sense to have all those weapons in that mode. That's actually preferred. I actually prefer it that way. The close range combat should have the dumb fire, should have the scattering beam gun, because scattering beam gun, because the closer you are, you know. This mode uh, is fine. That's a knockdown. Why the, kind of the biggest problem I've got with this mode is it's got unusual reload rates. Now, we already talked about, you know, this weapon, but this one also has an unusual reload rate. For an average beam, this is an SS rank, okay? That should be done now. For whatever reason, it's an SS rank. It does the same amount of damage as any other B machine gun that's an S rank or an A rank or maybe even a B rank. It's the same, exact same amount of damage. Was it 10 shots? Five, six shots. Okay, so it is a little higher. But the point is, and, and it's got the same amount of ammo. It's like 12 or 14 shots, whatever. The problem I've got with it, though, is it takes longer to reload. I mean, you would think that it would be better in some fashion. Yeah, it does more damage, but you'd think the reload would be consistent. I'm not saying it's impossible, but what I am saying is it's actually fairly easy to run out of ammo in this mode. That can be an issue. If you're just rotating your weapons over and over and over, that can be a problem. See? All in the red. Despite the kind of minor reload irritations here. This is still a surprisingly good uh, SS rank unit to use. I'm a bit sore, honestly, about the, re the reload rates and the fact that you have to, s you're stationary for at least one of these things, that does bother me. I mean, those are, you know, like, I, the types of weapons, like, there, there are no ailments, by the way, on any of these. Like, this is a knockdown, and, okay, whatever. And that's it. There's, there's no ailment here, there's no ailment here, there's just nothing. So the types of weapons you're running, yes, they're strong, but you don't have any ailments. It, it, it's kind of weird. It's called a mid-range combat unit. Yeah, it has more long-range weapons than uh, your average paper. You know, I, I don't quite get that. The reload rate on here bugs me. It really does. Because that, what ends up happening is this becomes your spamming weapon. Oh, wait, that's right. It reloads slower than your average beam machine gun. So that's an issue. Uh, you've got a long-range beam cannon here. Yeah, yeah, whatever. The boost rations, or the the reload rate's fine. The damage is you know, whatever. It is unusual to have a long-range knockdown uh, where you are mobile and and not stationary to fire. That that is unusual. So you know it, it gets points there in my book. But this. I don't expect this to be a spamming weapon. Fair enough. But the reload rate bothers me. Um, and, and, and considering it's not be, it doesn't bother me because it's a long range beam cannon that doesn't knock over, doesn't inflict an ailment what bothers me is that the two S ranks that precede this the V2 Buster and the V2 Assault they have exactly the same weapon, okay it's this big beam, this long beam rifle here, okay, that's weapon 2 and for whatever reason they thought it would be bad to have this be the same as the others. Reload on the V2 Buster, okay, I understand. But even, you know, even without that reload rate on the V2 Buster, if, you, if you're just shooting the, the V2 Buster when it purges, you use that Weapon 2 beam cannon, it still has a good reload on it. The fact that it has a reload up on it, in my opinion, really doesn't make much difference, because it already has an amazing reload rate on it. So, you know, that so you get to this point, and it's just, eh. And you want to be able to, you know, 
open up, you do your opening maneuvers when you spawn, when you're farthest away from the enemy. You kind of want to lean on these. This has a good enough reload rate. This No, this is an average reload rate, so you know, whatever. And then you're stationary to fire this one, which is, I'll be honest, it's, it's, it's strange, as I've, ju I've just gone through that whole thing. It's strange even if it wasn't, you know, my complaint about the V2A and the V2B. You know, this, this, this would still be a complaint. The reload is too slow. Likewise, the reload rate here is questionable as well. So I've got two long range, we or I've got one long range we weapon with a reload issue. I've got one medium range weapon with a reload issue. But on the other hand, I've got two other medium range weapons which reload just fine without the reload up. It's a weird position to be in, in terms of reload rates and the amount of damage it does. It, 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 it is, it is strange. Scattering beam gun. Uh, great thing to have around. It, again, has the widest spread I've seen on a scattering beam gun. So you just, believe it or not, this mode is really good for working on mobile armors, despite the fact that, you know, anti-flinch is an issue with the big units. These are actually, these are actually tank killing weapons. These are designed for killing big targets, and this basically neutralizes the fact that it's got a beam shield or it's got a fortress attached to it. If you get close enough to them and they're not paying attention, just sit right behind them and bam, 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 and you, you've got it taken care of. This is a very good, this is actually a very good multi-range weapon. Oh, oh, by the way, by the way, excellent damage on that beam saver. It really is. It's almost rock type damage. It's really great. So what would I do with it? Reload rates are definitely the big thing for me. Um... Let's see, I can't remember other reload rates here. Movement speed, radar, booster capacity. Eh, booster capacity doesn't change that much. Search distance, attack rate, or attack and reload rate. Okay, so you do get reload up. That that probably will help, but it also means uh, that the dump fire on the scattering beam gun will be your spam weapons. It's it's weird, but it's true. Uh, reload rate, defense against beam weapons when HP is 50% or below. So in addition to, so so the way that, this is kind of weird, and, and this is customized. You see it's Stand Up to the Victory Assault Buster version, which means this skill is customized for this specific unit. It has a beam defense, and overall, you get a, you get a permanent beam field, or a permanent eye field, in addition to the permanent, uh, well not permanent, you get a skill up, you know, I field in addition to this beam shield right here, which which do, it, it absorbs what is it, 80 to 90 percent of all beam damage, which which is great. Uh, now, it does have a shield on the side here, you know, right here, so you can break that shield, and the, you know, the shield withstands everything, melee, ballistic, and energy weapons, you know, so that that will break eventually. Uh, and this beam field does obviously will not protect you from project it will not protect you from projectiles it will not protect you from melee but it will protect you from um, from beam weaponry so stand up to the victory v2ab uh, actually gives you really really good defensive I I would almost say near per near perfect we're talking the 90 to 95 percentile of beam resistance weaponry so if you encounter one of these things your best counter to it is melee and projectile so I kind of spoiled that by the way the boost duration is good obviously um and you know it the, the, as as i said in the in the demonstration you know the melee mode should have the longer boost duration so but but this boost duration the boost duration in the in the shield mode is not you know bad that i can actually complain about it it's it, it actually this is kind of the standard scissors boost duration right here and then this one's a little more on the rock side of things so it's a very very interesting mixed bag we have going here i can't call it a jack of all trades because it has only one melee weapon on it and it's just kind of eh, it's an okay melee so you know it's fast it does four hits to knock down so you keep them pinned down for a little bit but you know damage this this beam saber is actually more of a defensive weapon, and you know it should be. By the time they get to you, there's only going to be like a, a paper thin fraction of of HP left on them. Anyways, after the amount of punishment you've given them up to that point, and you know here and here, by the time they finally get within melee range, they're just kind of standing there wobbling in the wind. It's like all you got to do is just kind of blow on them, and they fall over with the beam saber. So yeah, uh, best thing I could recommend. The reload rates are an issue, and it is tanky enough, or I shouldn't say tanky enough, I almost want to say just make it strictly because, let's see, how would I, how would I do this? Strictly because it is, um, 
because it has good boost durations, but also because it's got an actual beam shield. I'm not saying the beam shield's bad, but uh, on the contrary, it's a very good beam shield. But you might want to buff this up just in case, or, or if you're worried about the reload rate on that beam machine gun and those long-range beam cannons, you might want to stick those in place of the 500 HP. Boost duration is fine. I'm not going to worry about that. Defense up. And then you've got a lot to offer on the battlefield. So it might be to your advantage to try and keep your hide uh, as safe as possible. So when you get to level 12, maybe substitute this defense up for the level 12 thing. And then just go with that. The SP radar thing. That would actually, that, that might be a good thing to work with. Um, agility is not bad. That's agility dash speed, blah, 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 blah. You know, it kind of reaches the point where I'm almost, you know, I almost, like the things I've just recommended here, you can pretty much do them here. One, two, that's always a good thing to have around. And then, what was the third thing I recommended? Uh, defense up. Actually, no, that's an attack up. Um, you know, put some defense on it. So, yeah. It's a very easy unit to work with. Well, I shouldn't say easy, but it's 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 relatively carefree. I mean, what you've got here is basically any melee player's dream come true. If you're dealing with close-range combat, you really can't have anything better than what they have, what you have here. You hit them three times with this, and then you back off and spam these for a bit, and then you charge forward again and knock them down with that final hit. In this mode, you're just spam, 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 spam the whole time. The reload rates, yeah, those are an issues. But um, really, relatively small issues. Like this, this is your, sp your spam weapon. You're not meant to spam long range. I mean, not not really. So the best thing you can do is if you if you're gonna do the long range engagement age eh, la, la, la. if you're gonna do the long range engagement thing, start with this. Give this time to reload and then work on using this. As they close distance, it, it's literally a progression. You start here, you work down here, they're getting a little closer, so you start dueling with this, they get a little closer, you switch to this mode. And you go three, two, one, and they are dead. So that's about the best recommendations I can give you there. V2 Assault Buster is a bit on the expensive side to build, but on the other hand, it is pretty doggone worth it. So I would recommend investing some points in there, or some, uh, some combinations in there. Definitely worth it. The skills, well, it basically fills up anything. The percentages, you know, regardless of what they are, the percentage, uh, the, the fact that, it, I mean, you get movement speed, opponents on radar, booster capacity, search distance, attack, reload rate, and defense against beam weapons. It covers pretty much everything. Like, everything you can change, it takes care of. Ironically, the only thing it doesn't change is dash speed. That's kind of weird. Dash speed and maybe booster recovery. So, you know, what you could do is put a, uh, new type awakenings so when you get to 40%. That boost duration will just go for frickin' ever. Just saying. You could do the hand-to-hand -hand fighter. You know, that might be useful. I wouldn't, re I wouldn't really call this a, a, a SP spammer. I don't, I don't I'm, I'm not an SP spammer, so it's, it's difficult for me to make that recommendation. Exposed full ability, blah, 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 whatever. Maybe this in tandem with this. Although, although now that I think about it, you can't, you can't combine those. Moving on. you got Three stickers you have to worry about, the left shoulder, the right shoulder, and center of the torso. So I got the wolf right there. I'm kind of cheating. So it, it looks like a little scar right there. So, you know, people are like, you know, what is that thing? At least on this. But, yeah. And, of course, it doesn't change. I want to say all three V2s uh, have the same arrangement of decals. So, yeah. Uh, I chose this color scheme because why not? Uh, let's see. I wanted to do an AV unit four. Well, first maybe I should show you what it what it normally looks like. There you go, bright, shiny. It's a shining beacon, a vision of the future. For any more shiny, we'd get some J.J. Uh, Abrams lens flares in here. Just saying. Um, it's not impossible to do AV unit four. I just I I, I want to say even that my V2 Buster. I think I actually did that. Uh, part of the problem with coloring this, though, one and come on. Part of the problem with coloring this. Oh yeah, by the way, the shield has a big black spot right in the middle of it. So what are you gonna do? The problem with coloring this uh, is you've got the 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 sensors, those blue colored sensor thingies right there, uh, and in in kind of a weird way, for whatever reason, the V gets painted up individually. That makes things a little tricky. There's those things which are the blue. 
the yellow areas in SDGO, I, I don't know why they did this, but all of the gunpla, all of the models of the V2 Assault and the V2A Assault Buster, these yellow areas, while it does have the yellow area, you know, on the V-fin and then the, the much larger V-fin right here, that's pretty much it in terms of what the V2 Gundam by itself has. But for whatever reason, the assault parts in, in SDGO, they are not chromed. They're not reflective kind of thing. I, I, like, they're reflective, they're chrome, only because that's how Universal Century works, I suppose. Why they picked those areas? Well, simple simple answer. That's because it looks cool. You know, fair enough. But um, SCGO, Softmax, they decided that, well, the the chrome parts on the shoulders and the knees and the crotch and and the V on the shield here, on the Mega, Mega Buster shield or whatever, they decided that those should not be chrome. Those should not be different. So... They decided that they would all color up exactly the same, which eh, not a whole lot you can do about that. And, and unfortunately, you cannot apply Chrome just to an individual component. You know, so that's that's a bit disappointing. Uh, and then all the red stuff right there. So yeah. Uh. I don't know, V2AB, sometimes it can paint up pretty well. It depends, depends how you do it. Depends on which paint set you put on it. I don't like I don't like it when yellow and yellow cross each other. Well the eyes and and then under the eyes. I, I, I don't like that. V2 Assault Buster probably won't let you down in any major way regards to how you paint it up. Usually won't. Although, you know, if this this blue area and this yellow area you know, if you want if you want something different, or if you want a contrast between those two colors, this particular paint set may not work very well for you. So, yeah. I have a uniforme coloring definitely. If you can, I like change that to gray, and I don't know. I I, I thought about doing uniform coloring, but eh, it just doesn't float my boat quite that much. So yeah, this looks good. Unpainted. They haven't added the like you can see the sheer metals and the composites they're using. I like that. I like that paint set. So yeah. V2 Assault Buster. Um, it's by no means bad. By no means bad. It's just... And, and, and may, maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill and I really shouldn't do that, but I've got issue with the reloads here. And really that's kind of the only thing that bugs me about the V2 Assault Buster gun. It's just... Those reload rates, and you know, one of them is stationary, and oddly enough, this one's not stationary. Like on the V2, the V2 assault Gundam, this is a stationary weapon. For whatever reason, this becomes the stationary weapon, even though it's not on the other two. It's weird. But you know, I mean, you can run a balance type with it. Uh, if you absolutely can't stand those reload rates on those two weapons, you've got this option, which means your your scattering beam gun, and your dumpfire are going to reload hella fast now. 5% is an amazing thing. There's no sarcasm there. Uh, with a balance type, you know, stick this in there. Make it hurt a little more, you know. Attack, defense, dash speed, movement speed, because, you know, walking is all the rage these days. And then maybe reduce auto lock on distance or attack up or... I don't know. There's a bunch of different ways you can run it at this point. Uh, this, you can take that off if you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Insu it, wait, insufficient? Okay. So you know, take that off, and pretty much the things I'm recommending are things that you can attach from any of the other uh, tech trees here. And that's it. And so with that, this is AV Unit 4A saying thanks for tuning in.